Hi, everybody. Welcome back to episode two of Tales from the Veil, Realm of the Dead. I'm so excited for this episode, and everybody playing is super excited, at least I hope. Uh, and I'm very, very stoked to be playing. So without further ado, let's meet our cast. We will start with the wonderful uh, Raymond, also known as Goobadooba. Hi, I'm Raymond, also known as Goobadooba. I'm playing Ingram Corbinwall. Uh, yeah, um, he is, uh, for those who are wondering, his trope is the unlikely ally. Ooh. Oh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to talk about other than I'm really excited for this character and I'm excited for this next stint in the adventure. Uh, and I'm excited to see what these guys do too. Absolutely. And now over to the incredible Brick. Brick, go ahead and plug uh, your stuff and tell us who you're playing. Uh, oh, hi. Hey, I'm Ray, or with a brick with two Ks everywhere on the interwebs. Um, I'm playing the offbeat, eccentric, lovey Albrixis, a wonderful lover of all animals and furry creatures, um, part of House Huzzlecrest uh yeah no i'm loving it we're having a great time uh lovey's having a great time hopefully we don't fail this final and die wonderful and to the uh in insightful uh brad tell us your character and who you are playing i'm playing uh james leland he's a firstborn caster he's not from the veil and uh he just died. I drank a health potion, I thought. It was opposite, Dave, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess so. And now, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, the in, 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 uh, uh, my words are escaping <laughs> my mind. Uh, the always uh, very, uh, <laughs> dude, I can't wait to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's squid. Everybody knows squid. What's up, man? Great squid. <laughs> I play Alistair Whelm, and he is a studious nerd that sucks at talking to people, and he's rude and blunt, but doesn't realize it. Yeah, and he dead. Absolutely wonderful absolutely wonderful thank you all for coming uh to play in this second episode of this mini series last time we left this uh what would we call you a coven uh of wizards or a house of wizards this is a coterie of wizards if you will uh they all got ready for their day at school for their final before the winter solstice at ponson's institute of the arcane and unfortunately, they were picked to take the final for the cheating death class. And we watched as one member from each of the magic houses at Ponson's Institute of the Arcane slowly fell into death. They drank a health potion or some sort of potion, they thought, and once consumed, it ended their life. And that was where we ended last episode. Is everybody ready to head on in? Perfect. Wonderful. So, <clears throat> your viewpoint is submerged. You can feel ethereal screams from all sides. Something is moving in the water. You begin to kind of look around you. You feel air in your lungs, but you are lost in an abyss of water. It's hard to breathe. The colors are a muted green. The first word that comes to mind seeing this color is vile. Alistair, what are you doing? Um, trying to swim upwards to get a breath of air. <clears throat> you are pulling at the water and trying your best. Go ahead and give me a flight check. 
DC of five. One. You feel the air in your lungs. You didn't get a good breath before you took the plunge into death. You were caught off guard. You were struggling to breathe. You can feel the weight of your grimoire as you begin to pull up. And now, James Leland, you are also in the water. You look over and see movement, but the water is dark, it's muddied, but you can see what looks like a face move past you. And in the distance, you can see a swimming figure that you are aware of, that being Alistair. Do what I would see, you like to do? Do I see anybody else or do I just see Alistair right now? Go ahead and give me a check. We'll do a check for this. Uh, let's do brains. Give me a brains check, DC of six. Brains is D12. That's cocked. That was a six. A six, okay. As you begin moving, you can see three other figures, kind of some of them swimming upwards, others just kind of floating. Are they any of them close? Are they close together or not? Yeah, all of you are kind of about 15 feet from one another as you're all kind of in this space. And you look over and you can see Alistair is beginning to panic, swimming upwards. Would casting levitate on myself help me propel myself forward? You could always try. I'm going to cast levitate and try and swim towards Alistair because I see him panicking. Okay. Or not, a... It's more like flying towards him. but Perfect. Give me a flight check and use your magic die as well. The DC for this is going to be a five. It's a plus one difficulty because of the situation you find yourself in. Okay. Rolled. Wow, I only rolled a two. That's crazy. Okay, a two. You also begin swimming. <clears throat> You're getting small bursts and trying to get as close as you can. And you can now see what looks like a boat that seems to be on the surface, slowly coming into view. Lovey. Your eyes open, the water all around you. You see movement in the water. What would you like to do? As you look up and see this boat beginning to come into view overhead. I'm gonna start swimming towards the boat. Start swimming up. Okay, give me a flight check. Flight? Correct. Oh God. The DC for this is going to be a five. I got an 18. 18. Quickly and easily, you start swimming upwards, your head breaching. <sighs> As you look over, you can see a tall skeletal figure in large robes that kind of drape up and over, tattered at the sides. And he's holding an oar and slowly moving it. Hello? Hello? Over here. Yeah. Hi. 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 As I'm like wading water with my one hand and kicking with my legs, trying to as flag you, him down. As you kind of look over, you see he holds his hand out. And you see the water begins to part from you as you begin to lift and get closer. You all can see the water moving above Corbinwall, Ingram. You are met with the force of this water you were in. <laughs> Abrasive, terribly uncomfortable, and your air is beginning to leave your lungs. What are you I'm, doing? Uh, I'm going to take a beat and uh, I'm going to pull out my wand and cast hope. I'm just like, I'm hoping that it lasts long enough for me to get up 
like above whatever this is, and I'm going to try and cast Candelabra. Okay. Go ahead and give me... Give me a charm check with your magic die. And the DC for this is going to be a five. Uh, that's a nine. A nine. <laughs> you see this arcane energy begins to light up the water around you. And... Am I able to see um, Alistair and James? At this time, you were able to see them. As you see what look like dark, almost void-looking wisps refract. Imagine if you lit a flare in the middle of the ocean and you saw great whites all around, and then it instantly went out. But instead... You brighten it, and you can see your classmates. Uh, do they still look like they're struggling? Alistair is looking like he's struggling, but he is getting closer to the surface. I'm going to go ahead and just try and get underneath uh, both of them and make sure that they get out of the water first. And then okay. I will, once once I see that they're kind of like topside, I'll make my way up. Okay, perfect. Um, then let's have a bronze check from you. A bronze check? Dif- bronze check. And this difficulty, if you're going to be pushing both of them up, is that what you said, correct? Yeah. That's going to be a 10. 10. Okay. Jeez. Jeez. Okay. Okay. That's a 10, baby. Let's go. Fuck is, let's go, you dude. Push him up. Alistair, you feel you break the surface as something has pushed you from below, as you begin to swim upwards, Ingram, all of your heads above, as you see Lovey is being lifted into the boat. You see the oar leans into this water, and the boat begins to drift back around. And he leans his hand over the side of the boat, skeletal, thin. It looks frail as he holds it over the right side of the boat. I I reach out. Mm, You wouldn't want to touch me. And he puts the oar in his hand and leans it over the side of the boat. Do you all grab on? This is a large oar. Yeah. You grab on as he lifts you on and says, Welcome to the realm of the dead. And it is we dead who keep it. I assume you're here because of your final. This this happens every year? Every year. How is Mordenshai not been fired yet? Hmm. Because he is smart. A friend of mine. What is the likeliness that we'll make it out compared to last year's? Hmm. Not allowed to say. Do you say that because you don't know? Oh, I know most things. Here on the River Mortis, I see all. You got a name, buddy? I am the keeper of the river. That's right. it. Just can well, I call can we... I call you a keeper? You can call me whatever you like. I'm gonna call you a keeper. I call him scary. Where are you taking us? I am taking you where you must go. Back to school? (laughs) If only the final was that easy. He chuckles a bit. As you begin to journey down this river, 
Tell me your houses. Um, House Colvinwall. Tiver. Fornor. Hazel Crest. Hmm. You see, he kind of lets go of the oar. It continues paddling as you see a spectral form wraps around it. If you do not accomplish your final in time. And you see he reaches into the water and one of these wisps surrounds his hand. Then you will become like them. Lost. To time. And it falls back into the river. How long do we have? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like touching my hand, seeing if I'm like making, I'm making sure I'm like here. <laughs> like everything is solid. He says, you have one night. Okay. This final is a test of your character to see what awaits you, should you fail. You will be tested. Hopefully you overcome. Not many do. I don't the like boat, the sound of that. The boat continues down the river. You have a moment to yourselves as you're all kind of on this boat. Are there any... Is there anything surrounding either side of the riverbanks? Is there anything notable? Looking at the side of the riverbanks, <clears throat> it's weird. It looks like an empty void. And then you begin to see it in front of you. Shadowed tones but what looks like a forest ahead. The river winding through it. Hmm. There are secrets here. Secrets you are born to find. Do not let me keep you. As you see, now you look and he is pulled up to a dock. Keeper, before we leave, is there any advice you would give us on this journey? If you see husk mancers, run. Husk mancers? When wizards have done vile deeds and fallen, they arrive here where I keep them. You are not dead, not fully, and they will try and take hold. But those pure of heart have nothing to fear, but they do hurt, that, that much is true. Some of you will have to face your names, your families, your desires, your own thoughts. Here, you are the judge. And he points and you see a large tower in the distance. I exit the boat. Okay. Me too. Before I exit the boat, can I kind of like, as soon as I try to stand, I kind of panic and I look inside my robes. Is Halimar with me? You see as you look in your robes, Halimar is not. And you see as the boat 
continues to go down the river. He says, I almost forgot. And you see from his hand, a green sort of portal appears, begins to float over. As all of your familiars and backpacks are dropped onto the ground, as you see from the other side of the portal is your professor. Good luck. Find the stone tablet and destroy it. That's your way back. I mean, that sounds easy enough. I'm guessing it's in that tower over there. Well, that's what they want us to think. I mean, it's got to be pretty direct. I mean, it's it's not like... Why not? I mean, this is... It's a school... He, he killed test. us. We are dead right now. We're, we're only mostly dead. He literally gave are me... Are you going to go home after this? He gave me a potion and I died. I'll be all right. Right, we're here. Well, I mean, we're already here, so why don't, I mean, getting upset about it now is not going to do us anything but get us in a panic. I'm not necessarily upset. I just, I'm more so just really hoping we get through this. Yeah, I don't want to really die. Did you guys study? Well, yeah. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, wait, hold on. If our backpacks are here, then then hold on. And I'm going to go, I'm going to grab my backpack, and I'm going to make sure I scoop up Palomar and put him back on my shoulder and pat him a couple times and look for my notebook. It's in my, I grab my bag. It's in my backpack still. I, I pull it out and hand it to you. And I flip to the cheating death section. Are all my notes there? You find multiple different notes. One of them says, destroy the stone tablet of binding in which your soul is connected. Two, face your fears. And three, redemption to life. The core three tenets of cheating death. And then it says, defeat the guardian of the stone. <coughs> okay. And I just kind of like take the page and I show it to everybody that that's what it says. Well, at least we know, at least we know it's a test, you know? Yeah. I have a feeling this is going to test much more than our knowledge of the realm of the dead. Well, if you're so knowledgeable, then I'm where just, do we go next? Huh? Where I'm we go? just saying, I think it's going to test you more than what the notes are on. Well, I know. I'm just saying, just in case we get into a pinch. What do my notes say? Are you looking at your notes? Yeah. Perfect. Give me a check to see how good your notes are. Give me a brains check. Difficulty of eight. I'm going to use an adversity token to bump it up to an eight because that's a seven. Okay, perfect. Mark one of your adversity tokens off. As you kind of look through the guardian of the stone is a three-headed hound. Massive in size. Or so the notes say. We need to look for a three-headed hound. That's what the Guardian of the Stone is. All right, then let's go and find, uh, I would assume it would be in this do, what, does your note say anything about this tower? Do they? Uh, that does not say anything about the tower. 
No, unfortunately not. Why not just go to it, though? I mean, there's got to be something there. I don't see anything else. Is that their... They, yeah, that's our only landmark, right? Right now, what you see is the tower and the river next to you. You see this tower's kind of peeking through the trees. You see the woods almost look like clawed fingers, gnarled branches. The leaves are scarce. And there's a mist upon the ground. Um, I'd like to start walking forward and pull out my grimoire and conjure up an orb of light. Okay. Perfect. Go was ahead it? and give me... What's up? I was at, I had nothing. Do, do your thing first. I was... I didn't realize you were going to make him roll, so... Yeah. Uh, so you were casting magic, correct? Yes, uh, sir. Go ahead and give me a brains check for this one. And use your magic die. And have you cast this spell before? Yeah, but I'm not, like, super good at it. It's more Perfect. so just for reading and stuff. DC's going to be a 10. If you're trying to illuminate more than just the book. Natural 20. Natural 20. <sighs> you see the mist begins to burn back. And as it does... You see a horse begin to trot up with no rider. Whoa. And slowly. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. You see it begins kind of turning and moving its head. Lovey, lovey. Uh, just... Oh, um, okay. Uh, all right. And I'm going to try to approach this horse and softly start to try and speak in some sort of tongues to it to see if I can form a connection. Okay. So you're using magic to do this? Yes. Give me a charm check. Now I'm going to say the DC for this one. Because a horse is a pretty big animal for you to talk to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say roll it with your magic die. DC of 11. Oh god, okay, okay, okay. That is a... F That's only a 7. A 7. You get emotions. Okay. This horse is distressed. It has lost its rider. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it's, it's all right. <laughs> I know, I know you're frustrated. Um, okay. And I'm going to pull out a small piece of dried fruit, just like a little apple chip that I have. And I'm going to like put it in the palm of my hand and extend it as far out as I can uh, to see if they would like to grab it. It kind of yeah. eats it and calms down slightly. It's okay. I know. I know yet you're, you're feeling some type of way, but uh, maybe we can keep you company for for a minute. Yeah, you help me. We help you. <laughs> Am Seems I reading? To be okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to kind of like get on the side of it and keep stroking its mane and turn back towards the rest of the group. We made a friend. That's good. Excellent. Um uh, is can I can I search the horse? Does it have a saddlebag on it at all? Uh it doesn't rider? have any sort of saddlebag. It just has its its sort of um saddle on it. Okay, can I look over the saddle and just see if it has like a name or just like something engraved from any from its rider or just any any sort of anything? 
It seems to have the initials uh, PM upon it. Oh, okay, PPM. Okay, um, pretty mister. I'm gonna call you pretty mister. Hmm? Yeah? Yeah? As I'm just like scratching its mane as okay. uh, we're walking. I'm just gonna say we're, I'm leading it down the path that we're walking. Perfect. You begin leading it down the path. And James. Yes. You begin walking and you hear voices in the woods to the left. No, it's mine. And I want it. So you're gonna give it here. Sir, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. You know what's going on. Now give it here. I I pull my I reach into my bag, I pull my staff out and um is it lit up over in that area from his light or no? Uh right now it's just on the outskirts of the bright light that he is shining through the path. I point my staff over there and I cast lamp light to put just to send like a little orb of light over that direction. Okay. I want to see what's what I can see over there. Perfect. Give me a brains check with your magic die. DC of 10. Or actually, we'll say 8 for this one. Okay. As it's almost a reflecting of part of the light that is being blasted by Alistair. Dude, I'm rolling so bad tonight. I rolled a 4. A 4. Um, and you said DC of 10 or 8? Of 8. I'm going to use four of my adversity tokens. Okay, to hop you back up? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Face cam. <laughs> you shine the light over, and you can see what look like gnarled leathers, some sort of robes that were there, tattered, and you can see the exposed back of the rib cage of the one speaking down to someone. I want it. You can see right through the rib cage. The light goes straight through as he goes. <sighs> and as he kind of turns around, you can see the flesh is kind of pulled and ripped on the side of his face. It looks like burn marks scorched all over. And you can see what looks like all of his teeth on the right side. I... I just kind of like turn and look back and guys and I start running back towards the the rest of the group because I imagine they kept walking as I as I threw my my orb as you threw your kind of light over there mm -hmm. sure you all hear James I'm just I'm just sprinting back towards you and I, the light is still shining over there what's the matter there's some there's some dead guy over there. He's he there's wants... quite a lot of dead people in the realm of the dead. James. I know, but he's he's. I, I think he's coming this way. We need to go. Just breathe. We need James. to go. Breathe. Calm down. I don't like this. <laughs> well, we're here for at least a night. Hopefully, less than that. If we're here for a whole night, we'll, we're dead. I hope so too, but. This is our surroundings. We need to become comfortable or we'll lose our heads. Both literally and figuratively. Yeah, I just wanna keep I just wanna keep moving. I just uh, I didn't like I didn't like that dude over there. Right. So uh, stop getting yourself lost and separated and focus on the task at hand. There's gonna be a lot of things going on. This, this is an entire world. They they're not gonna stop doing what they're doing just because we have a test. The, the boat guy was just an easy start. All right, we can't we can't just be you know going off and talking to anybody. Is that we right. we're dead? We gotta just, make sure we stay on the path for for the test. 
You're right. I don't right. actually want to say that, you know? You're right. I'm sorry. You need to stop thinking like a mortal and start thinking like a Valian. You're different now. As, as Ingram says that, you turn and look and see the figure holding a child. And he just stares towards you and goes, They're so fragile. Mortals. And you blink and he's gone. Who saw move. that? I saw that? No, only James. Okay, cool. Oh, I thought you said we all said it. My bad. I just, I just, uh, I just keep walking. Like, I, like, I stay next to the horse. I don't, like, outpace them or anything, but I just, like, go stand next to the horse and keep okay. on the path. You stand next to the horse. How close are you next to the horse? Not very close. Okay, perfect. Uh, Small recap uh, on the horse. Is this just a normal horse or is this, like, a, like an undead scary looking horse? Ooh, interesting. Um, as you're looking at it, its torso area, right, like the main part of its body, is slightly larger than normal. It looks bloated. Yeah, I'm not that close. Perfect. Uh, Ingram, what are you doing currently? Um, I would kind of be, like, cleaning my wand a little bit. And just kind of like making like flourishes to just make sure that like I still have my like form down. Perfect. As you're doing your flourishing, you look to the right. Large war tables. Corbin wall cloaks. Beautiful, elegant hunting long silver hair and they all turn and meet you all 15 turn and meet your gaze what do you do I, I kind of I look at the rest of them and I'm like do you are you guys seeing this yeah. You are seeing this. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just. Do I recognize any of the faces? You recognize the youngest one. Shorter hair. Shock white with bits of, of black streaks. It's your father. And he is staring at you. And you can see tears beginning to fall. He looks young, probably around 17. Does he look sad or does he look disappointed? He looks like he's been reprimanded. Can I like, is there, is there any noise coming from that or is it just dead silence? Dead silence. I kind of just have a thought to myself. It's as soon as you fucking write, like, <laughs> um, like, like, almost it, like, just like deep hatred. You say it, and it fades. The mist begins to clear. Alistair, are you leading the charge? I'd say yeah. I'm walking and kind of a few paces ahead of the horse. You begin to walk. And you hear behind you. <coughs> I peer over my shoulder. You can see the horse's jaw is beginning to unhinge. <coughs> Uh, 
as you turn and look, these abysmal yops. As the mouth of this horse begins to extend open. Is there anything coming out of it? Not currently. Is it? Does it look like it's posturing? Not currently. I'm gonna keep walking, and put my earbuds in. You do so. And drown out the sound. You all look at this horse. Do you want to do anything? It's so it's just making these god awful sounds, and the mouth is slowly getting larger. I'm just stepping. Uh, hey, hey, everyone! Um, I'm stepping away, yeah. holding, pointing my staff at it, like. And I'm, I'm. I, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to get another beat on it. Can I try to get another beat on this horse and see what the hell is going on? Uh, sure. Uh, as you're kind of looking at, give me a brains check. Okay. DC of five. I'm loading a prism bolt, just preparing it. Okay. That's a six. Oh my god. Big god. A six? Yes. And what was the Looking, DC? A five. Five. <laughs> and I have a D10, so... Looking at this horse, you begin to see a face. Help me! As a hand begins to reach out as a horse... <laughs> is trying to swallow back down and begins to stand on its hind legs. The front legs of this horse. I start charging. I run. I run. I run so far oh. away and oh, you... try to get away. Like, you all begin. Yeah, sprinting. no, yeah. Yeah, if you're running, I'm running. Oh, <laughs> I'm running. Oh, I don't this... even care if anybody's following. Yes. As I see them running past me, I'd like to turn around and fling a concussive boom at it. Okay. Perfect. And right as he does that, can I also shoot my prism bolt? Sure, both of you roll uh, and give me fight checks and use your magic die. I'm casting levitate on myself and trying to grab Lovey and pick her up by her robes. As Dude. <laughs> What's up? Do the dice explode in this? I forget. Yes. I'm re-rolling both of them then. Oh my god. Let's go. Uh, I got a... Uh, 13. a 13. I rolled a 24. A 24. You see, as you shoot this crimson bolt, it slams into this horse as it begins. Whoa! But then you see Alistair pulls back and as he does the top of this horse that is now standing at a solid, like, eight feet, as it's beginning to move its body extend, you see a body wrapped inside, a face pressing to the stomach, as you, as blood shoots out, as you are kind of holding out, looking, Alistair, blood kind of covered, entrails on your shoulder <sighs> as you see a figure kind of gets up and goes <sighs> thank you now who are you I forget my name you see he's covered in muck friend or foe Friend, if you freed me from whatever that was. I kind of like turn and look to the party. He kind of moves the guck off of his face. Alistair, you've seen this mage before. Earlier today in your book. This is 
one of the Lord Corbin walls that was killed. And he begins to wipe the muck off of his face. I need to return wherever I came from. There's one of your relatives right there. I point to Ingram. Do I recognize, do I like recognize his face at all? No. You don't. don't. How do you know he's one of my relatives? He was in one of the books I was reading. You are able to know his face by a book? I... There's a spell I've been practicing where I can... In a sorts, be transported to the time of when the book was written. That's really cool. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that later. How long have you been here, friend? A long time. You died in battle with Pontius M. Woodbane. 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 And the eyes begin to glow red. Woodbane. A devious counterspell house of low renown. Woodbane. And you see the flesh begins to rot. And he is going to walk right past you, Alistair. He begins to walk towards the river. I say nothing. Do any of you do anything? I'm... I was... I w was floating. I'm still kind of... I, I come down and land now and just... There was a guy in that horse. That was the guy you read about him. I... I saw... Where's he going? He's dead. I think he's going to he's his saved. after. Well, I say we continue the test. Yeah, we should go. See. It's of no worry going. of mine. What a Corbin Wall does in the after. And I'll kind of like fix my robes. And then continue on with the party. You continue on. And you reach the tower. As you do, kind of looking up at it. There is a door, small, wooden. Nothing of particular make, just a stone tower that looms up into the sky. I start walking. I, go knock. Oh, I, I was, was going to uh, say, can I go knock at the door? Yeah, you walk up. And the last knock, <clears throat> it opens. I turn around to Leland. You want to send one of your little light bulbs in there? Yeah. Um, and I point my staff out and cast lamp light again and send an orb inside. Okay. You do so. <laughs> As an orb enters in, you can see what looks like a study of sorts. You see a man sitting there. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I can't. I can't. Alistair, you notice the voice immediately. Who do I recognize it as? You recognize this. Is Leonis Whelm. 
your father. And you see him standing up and just kind of holding his hands over his face. What am I doing? Why? In a darkened figure steps into the room, silent. He seems to be looking at it. But I, I can't, I cannot do this. It's unbecoming of my house. No. Not my son. Can I at least think on it? And the figure leaves right past you. You look back. This is an entryway into the tower, not what you saw before. You all saw this. Honestly, you seem troubled. It's nothing right now. Doesn't matter. I start to walk inside. Since it's while it's illuminated, I, I walk inside. I'll you follow. do so. You walk inside. You see stairs that begin to lead up the tower. But right here, you see a stone. It's a stone tablet sitting on an altar. Can I read it? If Go there's ahead. words? Are you walking up to it? Yeah. Give me a brains check. <coughs> it went from a 20 to a 2. <laughs> 20 to a 2. Hold on. You. Yeah, I might keep it at a 2. Okay. At a 2. There are a few words you can describe or pull from it. It's in multiple different arcane glyphs, but release is one word, and the other is payment. Are there any sconces with torches that have been snuffed in here, or any fireplaces or anything like that? Uh, currently, as you look around, there are a few sconces that kind of line the walls. There's about two on each side. But there's no fireplace of any sort. Can I grab a piece of the char off of one of the torches? Mm -hmm. And I'll pull a piece of parchment out of my bag and I'll take a charcoal rub of this tablet. You do so. And I look to the party and I just say, best to have it for later. Can't really make anything out of it just yet. Besides release and payment, um, can I? So one of my one of my classes that I would recent uh, this year was history of magic. Would I recognize or gleam anything else outside of what he was just talking about? Sure, give me a brains check. And the difficulty for this is going to be a seven. Oh man. Uh, that's a four. Can I? Six. What? I think we're. Oh no. Nope. Oh, oh, nope. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, sick. Okay, sick. You said, what was the. What was it? Seven? Seven. Mm hmm. Yeah, I only got a four. Okay, with a four. You're kind of looking at it. You know this stone is a way that certain Valians who have come before you have preserved souls for a time. If they are destroyed, which is not easy to do, then those souls can be reclaimed. 
specifically your four, four souls. That is, is the purpose of this tablet. Is this the tablet that we need to destroy? I'm unsure. <clears throat> like I said, uh, I only made out a few words on it, but why not just try and break it? Okay. Um, I mean, why not? Exactly. I mean, if, that's if what it we is, were that's to a do. easy, it's an easy test if that's what it is. So I, I'll just pick it up and just yeet it onto the ground. Okay, go ahead and give me. Uh, let's say uh, we'll do a bronze check as you're picking it up and just kind of tossing it down. Uh, so give me a bronze check, uh, DC of six. Uh, Braun is That's a nine plus one, so ten. Ten. You slam it onto the ground, and a concussive wave <laughs> shoots you up and then back onto your feet. The stone is unbroken. Do you think it wants us to use magic to break it? Can either of you two read it? Um, I was going to ask. Let me take a work, crack at it. I was going to ask also, working in the library, would I maybe, would a tra could I use like a transcribe spell? Try and like. Hmm. Interesting. How many times have you cast it? I would say I haven't mastered it, but I cast it pretty often. Whenever we get books in different languages or things with different glyphs and stuff, I've started to help Carl more decipher them. Okay. Then we'll go with a brains uh, with your magic die. And the DC for this is going to be eight. All right. I rolled a five and I only have one adversity token, so. If you use your adversity token, I'll give you two of mine. Let's let's do it. I'm I'm Okay. Yep. You see as he begins to kind of do this spell uh using this staff, uh how do you aid him? As you see the letters begin to move in certain geometric patterns. I start to recognize some of the patterns is some of the as like part of like because i also like spending time in the library even though I'm, I'm doing it to hang out with cats like i'm still kind of like seeing and hearing things so i feel like i it's a spell that i've seen others do so i recognize a little bit of what it looks like and i've i caught on to maybe a piece or two that he has out of place like two letters that he has that need to be reversed so i kind of very quickly i pull out my wand and just reverse them before he finishes the spell so that it finishes fully and complete. Wonderful. Perfect. You see that on it, it says there is payment due for the release of your soul from the tooth of a dragon this stone will be sundered. That is what you find on the tablet. And then you begin to hear shifting. As you see large suits of armor coming in from the walls, three of them and the helmets look like that of large dogs, wolves even. You see the armor They all three look in your direction. I, uh, I back up towards the party with my staff pointed at them, char charging up an arcane missile. We don't you back. Is, we is don't want to fight this if we don't need to. 
but don't we have and I pull out my notebook again and I point at the the note that says defeat the guardian of the stone but don't we have to it don't we have to do that to get as part of it it does but look like a three-headed hound but oh, but it does. says the why but why use violence how else are we We're going all... to get the suits of armor we're all Valian. I'm not. Yes, you are, my friend. You've got some of it in you if you can do all of this. You can be here. Somewhere down the line. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, with my, my uh, wand in hand, I'm going to cast enlarge on myself and try and shout super loud at them in a frightening sense. And my hope is to use my grit. I will allow it. Use your grit in your magic die. How often have you enlarged yourself? It's not something you've mastered. It, I would say it's it's only been done a few times. Uh, it's been more done like as a prank in life. And I feel like this is more of a proper time to use it. Okay. Uh, perfect. That's going to be a difficulty of an eight. Okay. And I'm using my magic die as well, right? Correct. And these are exploding, right? What's that? These are exploding, right? Correct. Uh, that is a... Twenty-three. 23. Perfect. Immediately, you go to cast this spell on yourself. And as you do, it starts with your legs. They begin to grow. But the unfortunate thing is, they're not stopping. Your body begins to puff up and get bigger and bigger and loom up. You begin to reach the top of this floor of the tower past the stairs. Uh, you're now about 13 feet tall. <laughs> as you've kind of uh, surpassed that by a bit, uh, as you're kind of standing there, uh, the suits of armor look towards you. What do you yell at them? Yeah. Like, <laughs> they go to arms. What is everybody doing as you have cast this spell and now they are charging towards Ingram? Is he stuck kind of by the stairs? He's, he's stuck kind of like this. I kind of scoff and I go, so simple minded. And I cast decrease on the armor. On the armor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a. Do, 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 do. Let's do a brains check. Um, yeah. Or actually, I'm going to say let's do a fight check for this okay. one. Okay. Fight check with your magic die. Dude, I'm, I'm not kidding. I rolled a 10 and a 4 again. Let's go. Keep rolling. Then. We can see it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is happening right now? That's a 44. 44. Oh The armor disappears. All of them? All three? All three. As you... Did... Did you do that? Yeah. That was really impressive. Is that <laughs> what spending all your time in the library does? Well, I mean, you spend just as much time in the library as I do. Oh, dude, that's what those books... That's what those books do. Yeah, but you you read you read the books in the library. 
He, yeah, he does. How did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, oh, I'm going oh. to need Alistair to give me a grit check. Or actually, sorry. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, a grit check. Four? Four. Perfect. Immediately you feel a pain in your ankle. Ah! As you look down and see one of these small armors. <laughs> and they're cutting into you. As you're just kind of looking down at them. I want this to be so badass, dude. I want him to look up at me and see me as a primordial being holding this giant-ass book. And I'm just like... And I hit him with a concussive boom. Okay. Go ahead and give me your fight check with your magic die. Do you see if this is a five? It's a seven. A seven. You all just hear... <laughs> Very okay. softly as you... Do I see any more? Do I see any of the other ones? You see a couple of them are running and climbing up the stairs. I want to go try and just pick one up. Like, and like hold it in front of, like... You and pick it up, and you're kind of looking towards it. I hold my... I put it right in front of my staff, and I shoot an arcane missile, like... Like, like right at it to shoot it into the wall. Perfect. Go ahead and give me a fight check. Cool. And use your magic die, since you are using magic. Hit the sweet spot. I rolled an... Ooh, the eight exploded. So, eight plus six, so... Fourteen. What's your magic? Fourteen. A four. Perfect. So eighteen. No, I. No, I rolled a three, on that, and I rolled an eight and a three here. Oh. Yeah. Right. And what was the difficulty? It was a ten. Yeah. And you rolled an eighteen. I rolled a fourteen. Or a fourteen. Got it. <laughs> you see the armor evaporates, as you see a glyph appears. <laughs> And a second glyph appears. Just gotta get that third one. None of you can see it. You're looking around. Can I... Uh, I'll take out my wand and put it to my temple and say, Oki Velosi? and cast fast eyes on myself to see if it will allow me to kind of like hyper focus okay go ahead and give me a brains check with your magic die okay and the dc you're looking for here is five uh i got a five exactly a <laughs> three and a two perfect you immediately begin to track and you see uh that he seems to be on the side of this altar you see the stone on, and he's going on top of it. Over there on the altar! And I'll like point. I imagine I'm, I'm kind of on the opposite side of the room, so. And he is going to touch onto the tablet. Perfect, and <laughs> appears back at full size and lunges. Uh, I'm going to need a grit check from James Leland. All right, that's that's my uh, stat. <laughs> can I actually uh, use uh, Warden's redirect to to help like get like knock this whatever this thing is away from Leland? Warden's redirect, depending on how we said it, was kind of channeling magic energy, correct? It was like a pretty much like shield. Okay, you can certainly try. It's not on yourself, though, so it will be at an added difficulty. 
Uh, so, but it does say here, because I do have the strength guardian, when defending another player, always roll both your stat die and the magic die and add them together, even if you're not using magic to do so. Right, you're already rolling the magic die. Okay. So then... So, what was the... What, was, what did I need to pass? Uh, you were rolling against. What'd you get? <laughs> I rolled a four. A four. Fantastic. Yeah. And then am I rolling my... Would I be using my fight? Or would I also be using grit? Uh, I would say you'd be using your grit for this. That is a... Uh, oh, that's exploding. Uh, so that is 10 plus 4, 15. 15. You see, as this sword kind of comes in to hit you, Leland, it's about to make purchase on your rib cage. And as it comes in, you see this large figure in the corner. And as you cast a spell, begin to shrink as the shield pops up in front of you, as this sword bounces off as it pulls back and begins to look for its next target. Uh, what are you doing, Levy? Uh, Levy would like to kind of whip around and once again, take out her wand and say Impiato and cast Entangled. Is there any uh, like malleable material around this creature at the moment? Uh, I mean, there's the stone floor and there's the metal of the sconces of the torches at the side and the small altar that's in f or behind him now. Okay, she's going to try to entangle him with the metal of the sconces and direct okay. the energy with that and try to, like, encage him. Perfect. Then give me... Uh, let's go grit check for this one because you're kind of doing it to keep everybody else Wonderful. safe. So grit check plus your magic die... Uh, and this is at a five, just due to the lack of resources that you have in here. No worries. Oh, that's cocked. Okay, that is a seven plus a... Oh, does the magic die also explode? Or yes. does that... Okay, so that's a four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Fourteen. Fourteen. Perfect. <laughs> you see this metal of the sconces begins to move around, stretching longer and longer as you begin pulling it in. Uh, as it comes into play, it begins to wrap around this armor <laughs> as he is restrained. All hits on him will be at a lower difficulty. Perfect. So, what uh, what are you all doing? Here's next. Um... Do you want to go, Michael? Sure. Um, this is kind of an experimental spell that I've read about, but can I cast Compress? Compress? A compression spell. Hmm. Okay. Give me a fight check with your magic die, and you want to hit an 11. Dude. 16. 16. Still in that spot. Immediately, the armor sunders. As it rips in, it begins to malform and crack as the last glyph alights. As you see, the top of this tower begins to mold and move. And you see... The tower begins to dissolve, breaking down. You see the door reappears behind you. Uh, you all run out. As you yes. run out, this tower begins crumbling. And I need everybody to make a flight check for me. And if you are using your broom to hop on and get away, that is also an option. I'm going to use my levitate spell so I can roll my magic die. Okay. I will use my broom. I'm okay. also going to use my broom. I'm going to have to use my broom. Would that be able to let us use our magic die with that? 
flight and your magic die and whatever bonuses your broom might give you. Oh. Also, don't forget you have skills that might have a plus one on them. I got a 14. 14. 13. 13. Or I rolled a 14 also. Wonderful. You all begin to get on your brooms and fly out of this tower as you look up and see <laughs> this stone is collapsing and <laughs> slams into you, Ingram. You fall. You see the rubble falls and separates as you are on the ground. <sighs> and you kind of look up. And as you do, you can see a figure in shadow. And you can hear, Lady of the Seven Towers, I command an audience with you. You hear, speak. As you're looking, the shadowed figure says, My lady, I'm sorry. Well, what are you doing? Well, and you see your mother falls to the ground, dead. And that is where we are going to end this episode. We will see you next time for Tales from the Veil, Realm of the Dead.